Aqua friends, welcome to my channel. My name is Nicole and today I have a very dreamy watercolor floral for us to do with some beautiful bokeh lights in the background and this just turned out so beautiful. Here's the reference photo that I used for it and I'm going to show you the technique on how I got this really bright illusion of a background. So first of all, I want to let you know that for the masking fluid, I did water it down. So I have these little porcelain bowls that I use for my watercolors. I basically put a tiny bit of masking fluid in there and then watered it down further. Now to prepare your round sponge, you can pre-wet it and soap it up with some liquid soap before you dip it into the masking fluid. So here we go, on dry paper, I'm putting the bright spots that I see in the reference photo. I'm gonna put quite a few of the round dots here on that left-hand side of the painting where it's super bright. Now a nice thing about watering this down is it's not gonna be as goopy, your edges will be a little more defined and whatever you don't use, you could stick it back into your container. The water is not going to hurt it at all. And plus, it dries faster. So you're going to let that dry completely before we go ahead with the rest of the painting. So I'm just pre-mixing all my puddles of paint that I plan on using. And our background, of course, is going to be wet on wet. This is pretty much how I start all my watercolors. I can't imagine doing a watercolor that doesn't have the wet on wet technique because after all it is watercolor. <laughs> so I do want those paints to move and just kind of blend in all kinds of wonderful ways. So I'm getting that really nice and wet. I'm using a hacky brush for this. It holds a lot of moisture and it's going to have lots of water on my paper. So the colors that I'm using here are sepia, quinacridone gold. I also used another brown from um, Daniel Smith, and I don't remember it off the top of my head, but I will have it in the description of this video. But it's a really pretty uh, warm brown, and it's just absolutely gorgeous. So the bottom left is quite dark like in the reference photo so i'm trying to get in all these colors so i'm trying to keep a very simple palette so i have browns and pinks and that's it guys like nothing nothing super fancy here so as your paper's drying you can pre-wet it by just uh, spraying it with some water like i'm doing as i'm going along i do like to lift up my board and sort of tilt my paper to kind of see what's going to happen and let the uh, colors blend together. That's the super exciting part. Coming in with my pinks, I do have quinacridone red that I'm using. I'm also using Oprah. So notice as I see my paper drying, I'm just like shooting it with a little bit more of uh, some misty water there. I'm using my brush and putting in, just basically dabbing on these browns and reds where I see them. Now everything is quite fuzzy in the background, so don't overthink this guys, have fun with it. So now I'm going to tilt the board and see what happens and just let, let it do its thing. All right, so now that I tilted it, there is a little bit of water I'm picking up. There's <laughs> quite a bit of moisture there, so I'm just uh, picking up uh, the parts that are pooling. Adding some more pinks in this, in this background here, nice little pops of pink. This would be a beautiful painting for Mother's Day to give to your mom or a friend. So 
so with my round brush I'm just making basically round blobs to demonstrate the idea of these flowers in the background. There's quite a bit of blossoms. Now we can always go over these blossoms in the second layer to do a few that are in focus. So you don't have to worry about leaving space for those because we're just going to go right over them and just define the shape more in the second layer. Not all of them, just a few. So once I'm happy with the amount of pink blossoms I have, I am going to further pick up some of these lights that we see in the reference photo, especially in that dark corner. We um, pick up some of these bokeh lights there. It really stands out against that contrast. Now, I suggest you guys take your time with it. So these round sponges you could get at any craft store. I got these at Michael's. And you do want to use it damp and have a tissue. So I am, my paper's still damp too. It's easier to lift paint when your paper is still wet. Okay. So you can lift up the paint now is the perfect time. And you can go over the same area twice when you want it to be a lot brighter. So I am doing that, especially in between the areas that I masked out because I do want that concentration of bright lights there. Okay, if your paper towel gets saturated like mine did, grab yourself a new paper towel. <laughs> and after a while, when uh, I do dip my dauber into the uh, fresh water to clean it off. So I'll do a few on the paper, then I'll wash my dauber in the water, and then go back to my painting. There are a few of these lights throughout the blossoms, but not too many. It's mostly concentrated on that left-hand side. But this is the fun part. I absolutely love doing, you know me, I love doing the... I know I'm supposed to say bouquet lights, but I always say boca, and I just love boca, 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 boca. <laughs> I'm sorry if I'm saying it wrong. You get used to saying um, saying things a certain way. You say tomato, I say tomato, you know, that sort of thing. <laughs> okay. Um, so getting close to the end here. This is all about prepping. The most important part of any painting is going to be that first layer. So take your time and enjoy the process. It's so much fun. All right, so my paper is still a little damp. And I just wanted to put some of these faded branches in the little bottoms of the florals that I see. So as you can see, I'm just really doing it messily. The looser you are, if you hold your brush towards the top, the better it's going to be. You're going to be uh, forced to be a lot more looser with your florals. So just a couple of suggestions here of some uh, branches in that background while it's wet so it goes all fuzzy. So let that whole thing dry, guys. Make sure it's really good and dry. And then you're going to take off your masking fluid. Now I have a little piece of Magic Eraser here. You're going to get that nice and wet. And I'm spraying the area where I want to further lift and have this 
fuzzy halo effect around the bokeh lights. You want to take your time with this. You don't want to uh, really rub too vigorously because basically a magic eraser is like a fine sandpaper. You're actually lifting off um, some of the cotton of your paper a little bit. Oh, and that's another thing. You guys might not be able to do this if you're not using 100% cotton paper. You want a really good brand paper like Arches or the Hanamul Collection Series. Those are the two top favorites. I, I also like the Beihong uh, watercolor paper, and it's uh, very cost effective, and it's great paper as well. So those are my top three choices. So as you can see, I am taking my time. You don't want to just go to town on one spot because you're going to make a hole in your paper. Gently lift a little bit, further lift with your piece of paper towel. I'm constantly re-wetting my sponge to clean it off. And I'm just going around the edges of the circle to, so that you keep that middle nice and bright. That's what's going to give you that illusion. You want to keep that paper white. But isn't that turning out cool? I just, this was so much fun, you guys. I'm so excited. <laughs> I hope you guys give it a try. Let me know what kind of paper that you're using. I also want to mention that if you guys don't have these round daubers, don't worry about it. You could just buy stencils of different size circles and lift off your circles in the same way. Okay, so around the edges. And I'm just dabbing, dabbing, dabbing. And just working at that nice and gently. Okay, you see how it's softening up a little bit? It's not so such a stark contrast. And they're starting to look like uh, those areas are glowing. Okay, so just tease out those edges. Other uh, bokeh lights that I lifted with the sponges, if I want them a little brighter, I'm using my magic eraser and um, further lifting paint off. As you can see, the, your, um, your piece of sponge will slowly but surely fall apart like mine is starting to do. <laughs> so you could just take another chunk off the block and uh, continue on. Now, if there's any areas I want lighter, I could always use my sponge. It'll still lift even though the paper is dry. I have a wet sponge and I just keep dabbing at it. All right, so as far as the blossoms here for the flowers, you could continue with your round brush it would be fine but i absolutely love using a chisel brush to make flowers because it's so much fun you you could use a darker color on one side like i'm doing so you get this gradation of color and i have other videos where i've done this with uh 
some birds and other flowers. So the colors that I'm using for my blossoms is shell pink and that does have uh, an opaque white in the paint. So it's, it's a nice base color to use because it's uh, more opaque and it will go over the colors that we've already used. And then I dip the end of my chisel brush into the darker pink. And so you get this really pretty uh, darker striations like I see in the reference photo for these uh, magnolia blossoms or tulip blossoms. I'm really not sure. Um, we call them tulip trees here in Pennsylvania. Okay, and then you can further darken the colors. Your, your blossoms are still wet, so you can dab in some darker pigment where you see fit. So sometimes I'm coming in just with the shell pink to get a base and then I'm dipping it in the darker to get a couple of lines in for the darker sides of the, the petals. That's Fig, you guys hear in the background. Now he's becoming a chatty Cathy here. My birdie. <laughs> I have a little backpack. I bring them for walks with me. So we just got back from bringing the dogs for a walk. And uh, he just loves that backpack and checks out the scenery as we walk along. <laughs> So my plan is not to do absolutely all of them in focus. I just want a few here and there. So once you're happy with the amount of blossoms that you have, then I'm switching to a script liner brush. This is sepia that I'm using and I'm gonna put in the branches, the ones that are in focus. I like to draw my lines kind of shorter, stop, start again. You'll get these like little joints in the branches it'll kind of look a, li a little bit more realistic because it'll look like different segments i also like to use my pinky finger and um, use that on the paper to help me draw the lines especially when i'm going over wet areas and i have to kind of hover above the other flowers But isn't that funny how it just all sorts sort of comes together uh, with these branches? You wouldn't think that would make such a big difference, but it really is.
again, you know, you can keep going, but whenever you feel like you have enough branches, I don't want to overdo it. So I'm just about done drawing those in now. And the last thing, of course, is that you are going to sign your painting. You guys just created a masterpiece. Congratulations. <laughs> awesome job, guys. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial as much as I did. And let me know what you think in the comments below. I am going to tag the flowers that I did with the chisel brush. If you guys are interested, I go into it further in that video. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys later.